Wait, I know from everyone's messages and comments, you don't like ornamental prints that much and prefer functional things, me too. Seeing most of the trending Halloween prints just sit on the shelf, I picked a few that can showcase how we can easily add different colors to a print without printing separate parts. Let's print. More print manufacturers are coming out now with multi-material auto changes, but there's still some old school ways to get more than one color into a print from your standard printer at home besides just printing separate parts. There's a limitation and things to watch out for on how to apply these on your prints and I'll go through what to keep in mind as I talk about the three fairly easy methods. You probably already know one or two of them already. This one's really easy and one that you might have already done accidentally. It's very limited though in its application. After you've printed something in one colour, simply just switch the filament without doing a purge. You'll only get the original colour for a very short time because it's only what's going to be left in the hot end. You can see with this little ghost where I printed something black right before I printed this in white. Best results for this technique are small items where you can get a few layers in before the new filament starts taking over. Even with large prints though, you can get a cool effect for your first layer, like this flat bottom print of a couple of recent prints I did. Your slicer will normally print the perimeters first, so you get a kind of outline of this old color. There was a little more than just the outline for this one, and you can see there's a little gradient creeping across. It's an interesting effect you might find useful. This technique might be one that you've seen in a different capacity. A lot of people join remnants of filament so they don't waste small leftover pieces. What you can do though is use the same idea to change the color during a print. It's tricky to get right if you want a specific layer. You can get more specific by not joining the filament but pausing the print and manually switching when you see you're at the layer you want. Otherwise you need to measure and join at very specific places which might not exactly line up to where you think it does. What layer to pause is pretty easy to see in your slicer. I'm showing in Prusa slicer but any slicer has a similar feature where you can go down the layers and get the info for that specific layer. In Prusa slicer you just head down to where you want to change the color and you can easily see the layer number and when the slicer calculates the time into the print, it will be at that point. There's a few ways of pausing and you can do this manually. Most printers have a pause feature. I use Octoprint to control my end of five so I can easily just hit the button. Something to keep in mind is where you pause. Try to pause when you're in the middle of infill or a section of the print you aren't going to see. When you're doing the changeover, you can get some extra filament come through when you push through that new color. And I tried to exaggerate it a little here so you can see what it looks like. But even if you're super careful, just interrupting the flow will obviously affect the quality of the print at that point. And if you're on the perimeter, it will definitely affect how the print ultimately looks. While you shouldn't push too hard to avoid bulge, you should also make sure you push hard enough so that you don't miss a layer and get under extrusion for a layer or two. If you can master this method, you can get a really clean look though. Before our last method, let me take a quick second to thank our sponsor, PCBWay. If you've ever printed something and thought, I really need this in another material, have a look at PCBWay's 3D printing services. You can get things printed in any material you want, in any volume you want, even material like aluminium or titanium. Check out their other services like CNC and custom PCBs. Now let's get back to the video. This one's the easiest to do and it can give you an interesting result. It's a little unreliable as well, unless that's the effect that you want, of course. For this one, I wanted to get a longer blending effect. Up to about a quarter of the way, I checked the slicer to see how long the filament is for the full print and worked out about what a quarter would be. This can be hard to judge if the size of the model is different in certain sections. If you think of a pyramid, what might be a quarter of the way up isn't necessarily a quarter of the length of filament for the total print. Then all I did is just use the Sharpie to mark the filament with more of the color at the start and gradually a little bit less as I went along. There's obviously a few things to keep in mind for this one. So the makeup of most inks is a mix of different colors, especially black. So depending on brand and color, you might get some colors like I did with this one where the color starts to separate 
into a bit of red, a bit of purple. As it gets lighter, it becomes more noticeable. With primary colors, blue, yellow, red, it should be more consistent. I consider this one a little bit more akin to tie dyeing. If you've ever done that, you might be a bit surprised with the end product once you unwrap it. White works best by far because you aren't mixing with anything else, but it tends to show the different colors that make up the marker more. If you think about how much color you're actually adding to the filament that's running through, there's really not very much, even if you fully coat it all the way around. So I hope these methods can help a few people out. Maybe you've got some more tricks up your sleeve now. Leave a comment if you've got other methods that people might not have seen before, as well as any functional Halloween prints that aren't just ornaments. That's it for another week. Subscribe and we'll see you next time.